One of my favorite science fiction movies of all time was Stanley Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey. It was made in the early 1970s and envisioned a whole lot of stuff that we actually see around us today. And one of the really cool scenes in the movie shows the massive space station circling over Earth, but the space station is spinning like a top. And one of the interesting things about the movie that, that Kubrick was very attentive to was trying to think about things that were physically possible, uh, even if it was technically not achievable at his time. And what he was trying to envision with a space station that spins like this is one where he could create artificial gravity on the, on the space station. So we've all seen pictures of NASA astronauts floating around inside the space shuttle and their ballpoint pen or their, uh, their dinner is floating around, around their head because there's very weak gravity. And in the movie, he's trying to envision a space station where you could walk around and enjoy your dinner or uh, shuffle some papers and still have gravity on board the space station. So let's watch this scene briefly, and then we're going to talk a little bit about how this might actually come to pass. So notice how big that thing is. There's little windows and so on around the space station, and it's only partially constructed. And in comes something that looks like a space shuttle, which hadn't even been invented yet when Kubrick made this movie. Here you'll notice people walking around inside the windows of the space station and they're enjoying a conversation as if they're standing on the ground. In other words, they're not floating around at all. Some of them are even upside down, did you notice? So folks are standing around on this massive rim-like space station, and they're each enjoying gravity out there. This thing looks to be pretty big. Because if that thing flying in is a, like the size of a space shuttle, then probably the arms of this giant spinning wheel are probably 100 meters or a football field. Kubrick set this to a waltz because he was envisioning this as kind of a dance for the spaceship to have to sidle on up, for a space shuttle to have to sidle on up to this big spaceship and sort of develop a, a spinning pattern in lock sync with the, the space station. Uh, so I think that was the purpose for the, having the waltz music along in the background there. But the idea now is to picture a way in which physics could create gravity for someone sitting out here in this part of the space station out on the rim of a giant wheel such that they experience a pull to the floor in the same way or an acceleration to the floor much like we do here on Earth. So let's think a little bit about how the physics might achieve that for us. You've probably seen some of the science fiction kinds of movies in which the science fiction author tried to grapple with the idea that when you are out in space, there's very little gravity and things will float around inside of a spaceship. One of the more clever ideas for how to create an artificial gravity is to actually make your spaceship spin. In other words, have it each point on the rim move around with some speed v. 
If your spaceship is very large, maybe it has a radius r, then there's an acceleration. Every point on the rim of this spaceship is accelerating back toward the center of the, of the ring. Because we learned that uniform, even circular, uniform circular motion where the speed is constant still involves an acceleration because the velocity vector is changing as you go around with circular motion. So if you are sitting out here on the rim of the spaceship, you will feel a push from the floor of the spaceship back toward the center of the circle because you're being kept in a circular motion. So if we assume that the radius of the ship had a value capital R, which is on the order of 100 meters, so it's like a, a little bit bigger than a football field in, their, in radius, and we wanted to create an artificial gravity of 3 meters per second squared on board, how fast would this speed have to be? 3 meters per second squared, by the way, is not all that much. It's about a third, a little bit less, of the gravity here on Earth. Well, we're saying that the acceleration, which has to be v squared over r, is going to equal 3 meters per second squared, and we would like to know v. So the, the velocity or the speed at the rim has to equal the square root of the acceleration we want times the radius of curvature. If we put in 3 meters per second squared and a radius of 100 meters, Notice that I'll have meters times meters, which is meters squared, divided by seconds squared, and it's all inside of the square root. So the answer I will get here, it does have the correct units, it has the value of the units of meters per second. We'll have approximately the square root of 300 here, or about 170 meters per second. Excuse me, 17 meters per second. Or a velocity of approximately 17 meters per second. How big is that? I mean, it seems like very fast compared to a typical car. But let's compare it to the entire circumference of this ring. In other words, how many times does a person sitting out there in that big giant spaceship actually have to go be flung all the way around one full circle, or how fast does the spaceship uh, spin back on itself again? Remember that the circumference is 2 pi r the time to revolve around once will equal this circumference I have the velocity. So this is 2 times pi is approximately 6 times that 100 meter radius. That would be 600 meters divided by 17. This says that the entire spaceship will move around one full circumference or runs back on itself every 35 seconds or so, which is incredibly fast. It means this giant structure whose radius is about a football field, a little bit more in a radius, has to whip all the way around in just over a half a minute. So it's a very fast moving object in order to just create this weak field of about 3 meters per second squared.